Um, my name is Sandy Lengobo. I'm the deputy head for supply chain operations in the city of Devon. With the biggest city in terms of budget-wise, with 35 billion, people when they normally come to us, um, they come with good ideas, but they can't sell. And I think the, the ideas like your hookup dinners are quite good. Um, they would change um, and enhance you know, this kind of um, a market, if you want to call it, or try and, and, and actually help young people in terms of being able to, to present and be able to, to share their ideas. We have been going around all our wards. As you know, the city of Devon, we have 103 wards. So what we do when we go there, we tell each ward in terms of what project and opportunities are there. These opportunities are available in our IDP, which is... Uh, basically our plan, if, if you want to call it that way, that's where we actually put this project that we do. So basically what I'm trying to say to you is that we have different ranges of opportunities that we do have. We have the small ones, we have also the big opportunities. Um, as of now, some of you who are involved in um, transport, they will be aware that the city will be uh, upgrading its road uh, infrastructure, as such, we are going to spend in a region of 8 billion in the next um, two years or so. And I can certainly say, as I speak today, almost 4 billion has already been awarded to contractors that are going to be uh, rehabilitating our roads, uh, improving the infrastructure in terms of uh, um, our ETA, those of you who know Etegwini Transport Authority. So we are moving uh, in that regard. Um, again, there's a lot of opportunities that are there uh, in that regard. I mean, people will say Sandil is talking big volumes, big monies. We have created opportunities for partnership there. So people who are on the lookout for that, um, the contract may be awarded to the group fives, but within supply chain management, we have what we call contractor participation goals, where we create minimum acceptable percentage that they should subcontract. And they look for people specifically in those areas. So if you are in road areas, um, could be uh, supplying materials to, to, to such, then those opportunities are there for you. Uh, you can be able to, to get them. Um, so we, like I was saying, people thought, you know, the biggest deal in Devon was Moses Mapida. Not anymore. We're the only municipality that has implemented successfully a web-enabled system where you can also quote or submit your own quotation. You know, you don't have to come to our offices anymore. Uh, you want to talk to the buyer. You know, we're trying to avoid that kind of interaction where we, in the past, people have that, uh, you know, thinking that perhaps I need to know someone to get the job. We're not moving in that direction. We have uh, moved according to the first world. Uh, we have a supplier self-server system. You can log on yourself. You just have to be registered in our system. We have at least a minimum of 3,000 suppliers that have registered, and they are accessing those opportunities daily. So we're not talking about something that you must wait for a big tender. When there is a requirement within the range of 200,000 every day, it goes to that system. Like I said, per annum, it amounts to eight billion. Uh, thanks very much, Mapalova. Um, I think mine is easy. Uh, I come from business support, tourism and market unit. Um, our job, when you wake up in the morning, is to help you, is to support your business. One of the things that we try to do um, is that we need to prepare small businesses to be able to participate in the procurement of the municipality by us giving you the necessary skills that you are going to require for you to be able to tender successfully. I think as Osandile is saying, I think it's a commitment that I can make here, though I don't have a mandate, but I can give myself a mandate, that um, we, we can try and put together something to teach people how to pitch. Uh, at least I've got my seniors here. 
they'll be able to vouch for me. I think it's something, because business support, that's what we are there for. Yeah. You know, people don't come to us, and they expect to know, come to us, sit down with us, tell us what are your problems, then we can be able to, to help. We exist to help uh, businesses, big or small. We have programs, we've got what we call a Deb and Business Fair. It's a, it's a platform that is visited by more than 15,000 people over three days. We, we, we give an opportunity to, to more than 600 exhibitors to come and exhibit their services, their goods. It's a program that is international. We advertise that thing on CNBC, Forbes magazine. So even Africa is going to know what is it that you, you, you produce. So those are some of the platforms that as business support we have to try and help support businesses. We have our central supply chain office where you can contact us. It's called our customer and supplier relations office. So you can call those guys if you want to you know, get more access in terms of understanding the procedures because like we said earlier, people don't understand the policy and they think there are no opportunities. They will share with you the information, etc. 031 311 You can talk to the guys there. They are the guys that actually deal with um, our customer and supplier relations issues. They will then direct you to all other departments that have referred you, they will direct you to those managers that actually deal with those procurement in those areas. Thank you. I once sat in a meeting where we were discussing uh, the council business, and one of the things that came out was um, one of uh, our entities needed some bailout, and that was Shaga Marine. I think I can say that it's public information. So when you analyze their financial statement, one of the things that was killing them was uh, traded papers to a tune of a million rands a month. But they were not making business. So what then came out was people would go to Sugar Marine, look around, use the toilet, off they went. But that was a million rands a month. So it means somebody was apply supplying that. And then two, um, as it was said, I had parks, recreation and culture with a budget of uh, 1.5 billion rands a year. Then thirdly, um, I also sit in the, I'm a member of, of uh, the bid adjudication committee. That is part of your tender process. You may be aware that there is three committees that deal with tenders. Uh, ours is the last one, which then makes a final decision as to the awards. Um, this afternoon I received a pile of documents that I will have to read. Um, I've said in other meetings before, and almost 95%, 98% of organizations that are considered there are mainly organizations that do not have your profile. And part of the reason is because of what people are saying here. And I can assure you, there is no corruption in the manner in which we award tenders. I am a member of that committee, and nobody has ever come to me to say, please give this to so-and-so. Because as long as we continue making these excuses, in fact, one of the things that I say when people come to me and they want business, I say to them, especially when they are young and black, I must say this, I say to them, just write me two pages of what you say, and that's how you chase them off. They never come back, actually. <laughs> and what I've seen with young people, they seem to think that English is a skill and it's enough. But there is no content in the English that people speak. So it's not enough. Go beyond that. You must have your writing skills be able, when you are given two minutes, say within the two minutes what you are about, and you are going to get that assistance. Furthermore, <laughs> we are just beginning a construction in um, just below University of Natal, UKZN. Um, but the road that takes you to Pavilion. We are regenerating that area so that it becomes an economic hub on its own. About a week or two ago, we ordered a tender for 75 million rands for the construction of a museum there, a Zulu Heritage Museum. Not far from there, 
a Waine process who could be building a film studio. Those are some of the business opportunities. I'm telling you this because we are still going to be entertaining other or consider other submissions because that project, the museum, is about 220 million rands. This is the first phase that you are dealing with. Um, so I'm saying there you are. But then furthermore, we are going to be constructing a half a billion rands, 500 million rands library towards the end of this year next to a um, uh, workshop. Again, you guys, those are some of the opportunities. So I'm then saying to you, there is more than enough in the city uh, of Devon. Then lastly, I'm also a chairperson of an uh, of events committee, which deals with multi-million rands of eventing in Devon. Now, the biggest problem is that some of you who have who do events, they, they only think for themselves. When you come to us, don't come with an event just for one day. You want to see it as a program. We're here, we're here. Now, if you make your a million rands, but what development is going to be left behind? So some people, they come, have an event, get a two million rands, they off, they go and sleep, and then they'll only come back to you when they want to do another event. That is not how it works. And then lastly, we're also going to be constructing a, a sports academy again. It's going to be more than 60 million rands next to uh, Moses Mapila Stadium, the cycling track, where they're cycling track now. Those are some of the business opportunities as well. It's going to go with a lot of operations that it's up and running because as part of it, it's going to have some kind of a hotel for our athletes as we say in So there you are. It's up to you now. Thank you.